Hello and welcome back to the Dundee YouTube channel. My name is David O.C. and today we're reviewing Mercedes-Benz's third car that is fully electric. So we had in 1906 the Mercedes Mixed, then we had the EQC that came out last year and is well documented on the internet. And now we have the EQA. It's built on the platform of the GLA and it sits in a bit of an unusual spot on the market because there's a lot of entry level electric cars things like the ID3, the Hyundai Kona, these all sit in the 30 to 40,000 euro bracket. And then we've got a lot of other cars on the high end, things like the Jaguar I-Pace. This, it sits more around the 50 to 60,000 euro mark, and it kind of rivals maybe the Audi Q4 e-tron and a Tesla Model 3. Now before we get into the full review and go for a drive and talk about the range, charge times and all those things, I want to talk about pricing because it's very fundamental that you get it right. So this specific EQA comes in at about 65,000 euros and it's the AMG line so it's got some different wheels and a lot of other bells and whistles. However, in Ireland, as of right now, the government has reduced the government grant and in fact, the SEAI grant is no longer available to people buying cars worth over 60,000 euros. So listen up, basically the standard price of this car when you get it on the entry level is 56,125 euros and in that case, you're fully entitled to that five grand rebate, which means that you're getting it for about 51,000 euros. But if you stack it full of extras and options, then you're gonna get over 60,000 euros, and at that point, you're entitled to zero. So it's a pretty weird scheme, and you have to be very, very careful with how you spec it, but that's enough on the pricing. If you'd like to search for EQAs for sale, or any Mercedes for that matter, hit the link on the top right-hand corner. We've got over 1,000 trusted dealers on Done Deal, but let's get into the full review. When it comes to the styling of the EQA, it is very similar to the GLA. Naturally being based on it, it shares a lot of key components. However, the biggest differences are both here at the front and at the back. So at the front, you'll notice the grill is fully filled in. Personally, I actually quite like that. And another big giveaway is the EQ lights and the light bar that goes the whole way across the front. It's very, very futuristic. From the rear, the light bar theme continues and it looks very good, very pristine and somewhat similar to an Audi. Another difference is I believe they have moved the number plate from being on the boot to down here a little bit lower. And of course, there are no exhausts being a fully electric car. But then again, Mercedes haven't put real exhausts on their ordinary cars in Yonks. And that leads me nicely into the electronically opening boot. So being an electric car, naturally space is a little bit compromised and the boot really takes a hammering. So the boot on this is 340 liters. To put that in perspective, it's smaller than a Volkswagen Golf. However, it is actually quite functional. The seats fold in three different ways. You have a parcel shelf, very little load lip and a little bit of storage in there. However, these charging cables, nine they don't really fit and that's a good point the charging cable so we'll get on to the battery size the power all that in a short while but in terms of charging times there's three ways to charge it one is out on the road at a fast charger and you can get from 10 percent to 80 percent in just 30 minutes using a 100 kilowatt charger then at home if you've got a home charging point for 11 kilowatts you can charge in seven hours from about 10% up to 90 or 100%. And then of course, if you don't have that, you have the granny cable, which is a three pin socket. That one is gonna take you 35 hours. So you wouldn't wanna be going anywhere in a rush with that, but if you own an electric car, then chances are you'll have a built-in socket and that way you can charge it overnight and you're having a little bit of a rest. The vehicle we're testing is the EQA250 and it has a 66.5 kilowatt hour battery powering the front wheels. Later in the year, the EQA300 and 350 will be coming, which has two electric motors powering all four wheels. But as of right now, it is only available as an EQA250. 
Now, in the rear, well, first of all, we have ice fix points, which are very easily accessible. Mercedes are really good at that. Now, when you sit in, you do notice that the floor is quite elevated, and me being an extremely tall individual, nearly six foot, I'll have you know, not quite. But anyway, you will notice that my feet are sitting quite high up away from the seat, which is a bit strange. You do have a bit of netting here. You've loads of headspace, USB-C charging point. You've got a nice little armrest with leather finish, two drink holders there. And one other thing I really like is the windows. They go the whole way down. Now, the all important cockpit as the reality is when you buy a car, this is hopefully where you're gonna spend the vast majority of your time. So overall, it's a really nice layout in here. So to begin with the seats, they're manually adjustable and you can get them into basically a perfect driving position. These particular ones have kind of an Alcantara finish. That's the AMG line, as we said before, probably best to stay away from that because you want to hit the price under 60k then the rest of the layout i mean you've got your glove box there it's plenty big you've got door cards drink holders here storage here usb-c charging points another little hiding away point here with the usb-c charging point and it's just very familiar it's very mercedes-benz and i really like that it's not chasing tesla trying to have some massive screens and be a minimalistic car and it's just got old fashioned heating buttons, it's got vents, it's got two 10 inch screens, it's the MBUX system which is fantastic. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, you can hit the link on the top right hand corner to another one of our videos where we delve a little further into it. But just quickly here, basically it's got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is all you need, however, it works pretty well even without that. The touch is really, really responsive. You have all your sat nav, all your different kind of media things here in your vehicle settings. You can look at the energy flow. And then on this one, you have all the driving information. So your cruise control, your sat nav actually comes up here, which is quite nice. And you can kind of customize all that really, really well. And it can be controlled from the trackpad down here, which is quite nice too. And that's basically the interior. It is a lovely place to be. It's a familiar place to be. And I think the next kind of sensible thing to do would be to go for a drive. Right, so to drive, you just pull this lever down there. It engages, well, not first gear, but it engages drive and off you go. Now, the big question, it is an electric car, is what is the range? So it has a WLTP range of 426 kilometers. And to be fair, on a day like today where it's 17, 18 degrees, it's quite nice you probably will get near enough to that. It will be very honest when it tells you your range. However, in the real world on a winter's day in Ireland, probably expecting kind of high 300s, but that's still pretty reasonable to be completely honest. And that is more than enough. In fact, if you drive, I don't know what happened there. MBUX. MBUX having a mind of its own there. But uh, aside from that weird interaction, the reality is if you drive more than three or 400 kilometers a day, then you're probably doing too much driving and you need to maybe look at a change in career or a different commute. But that said, when you actually do drive it, so let's talk about how it feels. It really feels very nimble, which is a weird word to describe it because it does weigh over two ton but it's just very, very responsive. And that's the first thing I notice. So it has about 187 brake horsepower, which isn't a phenomenal amount when you actually really think about it. However, the biggest difference with this is when you get in a petrol or a diesel car and it's got 190 brake horsepower, you only get that 190 brake horsepower for a second or two. However, with this, you get it the whole time your foot's down. So it does just feel a lot quicker. The other thing is it's got 375 newton meters of torque, so that really does give it a kick. But it's not a kick from the back end, it's actually a kick from the front end because it's front wheel drive. And that's perfect, it will be available with four wheel drive and two motors, and down the line maybe that's one to go for. However, I think this more than suffices. Another thing I really wanna show you right now is the turning circle. So I'm gonna make a safe U-turn here on the road and it will really impress you here as I come around 
no problem at all on a two lane road. The turning circle is phenomenal, which would make this car very, very good around town. The other thing that's really, really nice about it is the suspension is very soft. It really absorbs the bumps, really absorbs any potholes. It feels very, very good in that manner. Another really cool feature is these flappy paddles right here in the steering wheel, and they're quite obviously to change gears obviously not it's an electric car there are no gears but what it does do is it affects the regenerative braking so if you don't know what regenerative braking is we'll leave a link on the top right hand side of the screen you can click that and it's kind of electric cars 101 but regenerative braking effectively means it uses the energy of slowing down to regenerate power so you can adjust it with these so if you click it on the left hand side it really increases it Look, we're almost going to a halt. You can actually drive this car with just one pedal for 90% of the time. So I really, really like that. But it is very, very sensitive. And when you only get a car for a day or two or the first day that you get the car, you're gonna come up to a set of lights and everyone in the car is gonna go like this because it just slams on the brakes, but you really get used to that. When I've had electric cars on test drive for a week or two, you just forget about it completely. So it's really, really handy, and that makes it more efficient, obviously, too. As a whole, that is the EQA to drive. One really cool feature, I feel like you have to do this every time you get in a Mercedes, is, hey, Mercedes. How can I help? How much range do I have left? You can still drive 147 kilometers. That's really handy because sometimes looking down the screen can be quite distracting. But anyway, that is driving the EQA. Absolutely lovely to drive. Now we've come to the point in every review where we discuss some of our favorite and least favorite things. And we'll begin with our least favorite. And number one on those is actually that you can get a tow bar that drops down out of here. However, unfortunately it only tows 750 kgs, which is basically like three really fat men. And 750 kgs in a car that has over 370 newton meters of torque just is a little bit disappointing. And number two is, I'm not sure if Mercedes is just trying to be cost effective, maybe a little bit lazy, but I'm not the biggest fan of how they've grabbed what was an already existing combustion engine car and made it electric. I'd love to see Mercedes and all their engineers build an electric car from the ground up. And that leads me nicely into some of my favorite things, which are that the original cars are so good and in the next few years, we're gonna be seeing the EQB, the EQE, the EQS. I think that one's gonna be very, very interesting. So the future is bright. Number two is that from 2022, I believe Mercedes-Benz are building all of their EVs in a carbon neutral factory. That is a big, big step for the EV world. And what's more is they have promised they're gonna buy their batteries from ethical sources. Again, another huge, huge step. Well, there you have it. That is Dundee's review of the all new Mercedes EQA. And I have to say, we've only had the car for a couple of hours, but it is really, really impressive. And it's great to see Mercedes really taking a proper delve into the electrification of the motor vehicle. Now, Mercedes are gonna have a load more EVs coming and over the years they've had so many different cars and it's going to be very interesting to see where they go with this whole new world that is becoming the motor industry. If you've enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching please make sure to subscribe to the channel comment below on maybe any electric car you buy or if you've ever owned a Mercedes or any feedback that you have in general a big thanks to Brady's Mercedes in Castle Knock for supplying us the car for the day to do a little bit of a review. If you'd like to search for cars for sale in Ireland from trusted dealers around the country, hit the link on the top right hand corner. It'll take you to Dundee's website and hopefully it will help you on your journey into buying a new car. But for now, that's it from us. We'll see you in the next one.